Hey everyone, let's talk about Ali Abdal and how he makes his videos because he makes two to three videos per week while studying and becoming a full-time doctor. It's crazy. But the question is, can it do the same for you and for me? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is King. By day, I work as a lead artist in video games and by night, I make YouTube videos about how to tell your stories better. And in my own recent productivity renaissance, I discovered this video where Ali shares how his video making process works. So one of the questions I often get is that, hey Ali, you know, you work full time as a doctor saving lives, but then on the side, you've got this YouTube channel and the podcast and the businesses, and how do you do all of this stuff? And he even shares the template that he uses to create them. And naturally I was super excited because in my last video, I left you with this challenge here. We don't rise to the levels of our goals and aspiration. Rather, we fall to the level of our system. So I thought if I could understand the system he uses to create his videos, maybe even if I don't make two to three videos a week, at least I can do one, right? And if you're watching this video, it's working, hopefully. So let's smash that like button, subscribe and ring that. Let's jump into it. So in this video, we'll talk about why the Kanban view is awesome and how I customize it with the SEO scores and how it can become the content calendar and thumbnail preview as well. And I'll show you where to download the template um, and walk through how you can customize it yourself. And if you stick to the end, I'll show you what Ali's uh, secret to branding might be. And timestamps are below if you wanna jump ahead. Okay, let's get started. So this is my version of the video database in Notion, which is basically what we see in the main Kanban view he shows in his video. And just in case that you're not familiar with Notion, this is like my crush. I didn't realize you can have a crush on an app, but this is definitely a crush. Anyway, it's a free app on the phone, on the computer, and I've been literally moving everything into this. It's basically replacing Evernote, Google Docs, Asana. It basically allows you to build a website that you can customize and make it so that it only shows you information you need, when you need them, how you want them to show. It's pretty amazing, but I'll shut up now. So again, this is my video database. There are some changes that I've made from Ali's, but basically everything works the same way. Every little box here is a video idea, and each column going from left to right represents the progress of how a video goes from simply an idea to getting filmed and edited. So for example, when you have an idea for the video, you can add it here. How to tell a story effortlessly. And this here is something I customized for myself, where I take vidIQ search and competition SEO scores into consideration. Now let's see how this idea would do on YouTube. Okay, so unfortunately, if you look down here, um, the overall score is pretty low. The search volume is zero, um, the competition is at its medium, so it's not really great. So let's type that into this video idea. So the search volume is zero, competition score is 50. So I got this little formula here to calculate the final score for me. If you have any questions about that, just leave me in a comment. But essentially, I added this because it helps me decide maybe, hmm, this video idea is probably not gonna be found very easily. So since no one is actually searching for it, should I make another video idea instead with a higher score? And maybe that's what we want to do. And I'll consider this idea instead. And as you can see, it got dropped down to a little bit lower because I'm sorting this column here by the competition score. As I'd like to focus on creating videos that have less competition for now. So I should probably work on one of these next. And when I'm ready to start writing, I can move it over to the writing in progress. And when that's done, I can move it to ready for revision, ready to film. And when I filmed it, I put it here and then eventually moving its way towards publishing it. But let's move this back here for now so it doesn't get lost. And as a disclaimer, Ali actually himself talked about how this system was heavily influenced by Thomas Franks. He did say that he simplified to fit his needs more, but after some research, actually I realized that many different creators are using Notion to actually create a similar system for themselves. And I think that makes sense because whether or not you have a team or not, this system is about basically making sure that all your ideas are in one place and you're very clear about what you need to do to get this idea from just an idea so that you can execute it, edit it, and publish it. And you don't have to spend any of your brain power to actually try to remember everything. Everything is just there. But I know what you might be thinking, King, I totally can do this on Trello or Asana. Why all this fuss about Notion? You're a crush. 
And you're right, you could totally do the same thing here in Trello and Asana, but due to the way that Notion works with databases, I think that you can actually create a lot of interesting workflows customized for your specific needs that other apps might not be able to customize for you. And I'll show you what I mean. First, let's scroll down to the calendar view. It shows which videos I plan to publish and you can customize the exact information you wanna show. For me, I wanted to do the interest property so I can say, hmm, Am I making enough YouTuber related content or is it too much Notion stuff? I honestly have a super big crush on it, so beware, it more will be coming. <laughs> and you can totally customize the information you wanna show here. Maybe you wanna see the status of the video instead. So if I go over the properties and click on status to show status here, I can see that on March 3rd, this is ready to film, which is actually the video that you're watching now. And also, the next two weeks, I actually have them written and they're also ready to film. So I'll probably set up next Saturday and try to film everything. Wish me luck. And then here's another view of, again, the exact same information, but this time I'm customizing it so that I can actually make it a preview. Sorry about the baby. Again, the same exact information, but this time I'm like, show me all the videos that have a published date and what are their thumbnails and titles. So I can kind of get a preview of what's coming up visually. So if you're interested in this template, I'll leave a link in the description. It'll have the vidIQ formulas and all the views that we just looked at. So once you click through to the link, just hit duplicate and it'll automatically be added to your workspace. Promise you though, you're really gonna thank me once you actually get into it. Now I'm aware that if you haven't used Notion before, or if you're new to Notion, that that might feel a little intimidating. So just to make sure that there's no confusion, I'm just gonna walk through the template and make sure that you understand how to customize it and build your own. Okay, first let's create a new blank page. Let's call it content creation. We'll click empty for an empty page and let's then create a database. We'll do that by clicking the forward slash key, searching for table, and there's our database. And by database, all Notion really means is really a spreadsheet, an Excel sheet. No one's ever scared of the Excel sheet, right? In the first column, let's add some names for our videos. In the second column, let's add all the statuses of how our videos will progress. Ideas to consider, writing in progress, ready to film, blah, 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 and you can add any status here that you want really. Have a bubble tea to celebrate when you're done. Now let's make sure that this property type is of select, which is basically saying that we only want one of these tags to be visible at a time. So let's move our cursor here and click add a view. Now there's a whole bunch of ways to visualize the data that we just added, but let's choose board for the Kanban view. And right away you can see it transformed the information that we just had. For video one, we had it on ideas to consider. And if we want, we can drag video two to be ideas to consider as well. And if we go back to the default view, the table view, you can see that video two status has now been updated as well. And if we change it here, again, it'll be updated here as well. Very cool. Let's give it a few more properties though. And again, you can add any properties that you can think of that you think will be useful for sorting and filtering. For us, let's add a publish date. And we'll make that of date type. We'll be using these for the calendar view later. But before we go and do that, let's also add another interests column. Okay, so let's create another view. And this time we'll choose the calendar. And would you look at that? Notion's already laid out our videos according to the published date. And if you have multiple dates in your database and you want it to show it according to a different date, you can just go up to the three dots here and select calendar by and choose a different date. And again, every view can be customized. So maybe you wanted to see the statuses of all these videos on here. You can just go back to the three dots and go to properties and turn on the tags. I guess I didn't name it earlier. Um, but here you, here you go. You can see the statuses of the videos. This one is just being considered for an idea and this one's ready to film. And since uh, it's three days away, you better get your butt going on this video one. Or maybe you want to just swap it and just get this video two shot first. Okay, let's do one more quick one. Let's click out of view again, and this time we'll choose gallery view, create. And by the way, if your screen is like this being kind of squished together, you can actually go up to the screen's three dots button and choose full width instead, which kind of gets rid of all the margins here. And you can actually hide this left panel too. So obviously no thumbnails yet, but let's just copy and paste something in there. Let's go into here and let's paste a few thumbnails in here. It's a fan favorite. 
And there you go. Let's paste a few more. For the gallery view, if we look into how we can customize it, we can see that here I can actually control the size of the tiles. And it currently is set to show page content, which is why when we put our image in the top of the page, we're seeing it outside here in the tile. And again, in the properties, you can show any other properties you want to show. It's really all up to you. Finally, let's add Ali's template into the system. Let's come down here and click on his template. Click duplicate and add it to your workspace. And here it is. Let's select everything in here and do a copy. And we come back to our database and click on the triangle here and click new template. Here, let's just do a paste. And now his template is in here. Let's also just give it an emoji and let's call it Ali's template. Okay. So now if you want to create a new video, you just come over here and click this and there it is. You can click it and give it a second. It's going to load up his template every time for every video that you make. Alternatively, you can also just click new. And when you're down here, you can see Ali's template as well. You click that, same thing happens. It gets populated with that template that we created. And just as a tip, if you already created a video and you've already added stuff like our picture here before, you don't have to delete everything and create everything brand new. What you can do is just uh, come in here, copy everything and just cut it. And here you can see the template show up again. You can click that. And then once it's loaded, um, paste it back in and everything will be fine. And that's all folks, but as a bonus, let's dive into that content template that Ali created because there's something that's very interesting in there that he didn't really talk about in the video. Let's have a look. So there are a couple of things that are new here, um, like this, which I think is pretty amazing. Here, basically he has a list of things that make his story unique. His values, the things that he's identified with, things he does over and over again, his origin story, his superpower, his distaste for people who uses Android. By putting this into his video template, basically what he's doing is forcing himself to remind the audience how he is unique. Like making Harry Potter references or talking about becoming a gym shark, which if you look at his comments and his community, they're talking about it as if it's an inside joke. And if you've seen my video about the science behind David Dobrik's vlogs, you might recall that Inside Jokes has the potential to create oxytocin, which essentially connects you with the audience more. So this is definitely something I'm thinking about including into my process as well. And just as a side note, you may notice that these columns are kind of all messed up here when we copied it over. Um, I have no idea how you're actually supposed to copy it over without messing this up. You can just drag your content block up to the right and you'll see that the line changes from horizontal to the vertical and then drop it there and that will create a new column. Anyway, I hope that you're keeping that YouTube dream alive and you're taking action like clicking that like button, subscribe button and let's all keep moving forward together. Be blessed. I'll see ya.